Hey, welcome to the IMS 2020 Virtual Micro Apps. This is Craig Kirkpatrick with Form Factor with a 15 minute presentation on favorite software tool from Form Factor, our WinCal product. So I've done many, many micro apps over the years on WinCal. And it's always been about um, calibration itself and the minutia involved with calibration. And I thought this year would be a good time to touch on all the other powerful features that are within the WinCal package that just simply by themselves don't have to do with calibration algorithms or calibration math. So that's where we're heading. Um, you see the outline we've got right here. And I'll just go ahead and head on to the next slide. Okay, well, quick overview, um, you know, if you're not familiar with WinCal, it is um, form factor or formerly Cascade Microtex um, calibration software that remote controls a vector network analyzer and gathers raw measurements, typically of measurement standards of shorts, opens, loads, and throughs. Um, computes an error set and then loads it back into the vector network analyzer. And then, you know, what, what I mentioned is we're going to go beyond that. We're going to go into um, some things that are just not so obvious or so not so well touched upon because, um, well, because people have to open the manual and live and learn, or in this case, learn from example. So I'm going to give you some examples um, of using some tools that were are within with within WinCal that make your life easier as a microwave engineer. Well, first of all, um, when we think of plotting data, you know, plotting S parameters, um, we call that a, a WinCal report. Um, and so, a WinCal report has got nice features in that it can help you very easily overlay data for comparison, like you see on that bottom right-hand graph, there's, oh gosh, maybe 20 different waveforms that are stacked on top of each other. And you can examine, you know, frequency point by frequency point, um, how things are uh, differing. And you can put markers in place, and it's really a quite flexible S-parameter viewer calculator. Um, within the, uh, the reporting tool, the, the basics are, yeah, the basics are you, you've got a, a button that looks like a little Smith chart right here. And that's what you click in order to initiate a new measurement. You're basically telling the VNA to, to make, make a measurement sweep. Um, then the next thing is you give a, a, a name if you wish. Otherwise, there's a default name that will go into place. You have a chance to um, assign logical versus physical ports. And then you click measure and you pull the data in. Well, moving along here, um, some lesser known features within the reporting tool is it's quite handy and convenient to have what's called a, a trace group. Um, and what a trace group is, is something where you can use um, standard regular expression notation, in this case, like dot asterisk, eighty dot asterisk and then excluding things that include these other strings um, in order to take existing named waveforms that you named you know, in the previous measurement uh, setup and be able to pull them into a group. And the, the beauty of the grouping is then you'll be able to um, operate the, on them together, plot them together, compare them nicely. So moving right along on that, this example takes the... Uh, all, all the matching waveforms, and there might be oh, well, half a dozen of them there. Um, and in this case, it's also using something that um, is applying a math function. And there, there are math functions that are pre-existing, or you can also write your own math functions. In this example, it's um, applying a normalized function, and the normalized function is a user function created. And it's shown there in the bottom. Hey, it's worth mentioning that you know, you've got this video that you're watching me narrate. Um, there's also the original slide material. And because of the length of this being compressed to 15 minutes, there are more slides. So if you wanted to actually repeat some of these 
um, tasks on your own copy of WinCal. You'll have more complete documentation by downloading the PDF or the or the PowerPoint along with the uh, the video that you're watching right now. Okay. Well, that kind of finishes what we were talking about with um, reporting. Um, and then the next um, topic that I thought would be interesting is another lesser known but quite powerful capability, which is what we call sequences. So think of sequences as being like a mini test executive built into WinCal that has convenient functions that are predefined that you can easily put over into the main um, you know, flow. It, it really makes it so that you almost never make any sort of a syntax error. Um, it's a very simple way to create a, a little language-based um, scripting for repeating tasks. And the tasks can also involve reporting results back out or providing customer input in. So in this example, there's some GPIB communication going on to, I believe, an SMU, yeah, B1500 SMU, um, in which case the user gets to make some setting changes and then run things. And it just makes life easier so that you're not having to repeat mundane tasks um, or write um, cumbersome code outside of the WinCal environment. So. So with that example, um, I mentioned that you can have outputs and inputs, and then what you see in the top, there's a little you know, menu bar. The outputs are highlighted in blue. The inputs are where you can enter things, and they've been circled in red. And there's a simple tool for defining these. And I, I realize that as you watch this video that um, you know, the pace of this is so much that you know, it's hard to uh, memorize this, but it's really not meant to be, um, you know, a complete step-by-step. -step. And what I, that's why I mentioned that you'll want to download either the PDF or the PowerPoint that goes along with this video. And then you can take your time and actually see it in full resolution. And you can actually uh, use your own copy of WinCal and be able to follow things and, and actually reproduce things. Okay, so... That was about um, the sequencing capability. Um, another lesser known feature within WinCal is something we call the location manager. And in this example, um, the location manager is being used in order to navigate and automatically land probes on a calibration substrate that just wasn't prior known to WinCal. So, you know, within WinCal, we have information about the XY coordinates of all the different uh, standards, you know, shorts, opens, loads, and throughs for all of the different impedance standard substrates that we produce. But there may be times when you either have created your own or possibly have some custom calibration substrate. And it's a way to record the locations and then easily navigate and return to them. Um, otherwise, um, you know, otherwise you're, you're using a probe station as a manual prober, and it's just a lot more time consuming versus a semi-automatic probe station um, having memorized locations. And you can just click a button, you know, click a, a name over here, and it'll automatically have the station navigate in X, Y, and Z and land on the standard. Okay. All right. Um, there is built in within WinCal, a powerful S-parameter calculator tool that we call the Math Scratch Pad. There's a number of um, existing functions, and you see there's a like a list of categories over here, and then within a, a, an individual category, there's an array of different functions that you can choose among, and Basically, anything that you'd like to operate on an S parameter um, data set, if you think about it, S parameters like an S2P file, it's a matrix of complex numbers. Um, and so, you know, trying to just write grungy code to crunch through that, it can be a bit of a pain. Um, so, think of this as being, you know, smart when it comes to processing S parameters. And it's got really a rich capability. 
Well, in this example um, that I'll un unveil here, what we're doing is taking um, an existing measurement where a calibration type, in this case LRRM calibration, had been applied. And instead of, um, well, in wanting to compare what an SOLT calibration would look like compared to LLRM, instead of having to repeat actually remeasuring everything, we can just simply take the, the results. We still have the error set. We can essentially unapply the correction to get back to the raw data and then reapply a, a new computed error set, the SOLT error set. And then it makes it quite convenient with, with one measurement to look at a calibration comparison. And that, that's what this example is doing to basically explain and expose what the, um, the feature of the mass scratch pad is. So in this example, you can see what we're doing is creating a new data set and appending a name, you know, SOLT. Um, the result is we've got the before and after. The, uh, the blue is the um, LRRM measurement that the red is the SOLT and you can just see uh, what the calibration comparison is so just just a nice rich example of if it's something that you could reproduce on your own um, by following along in the uh, in the files all right so in summary WinCal um, well known for its calibration capability is much more than a calibration tool um, there's very flexible graphing capability for S parameters that we call the reporting. Um, rich level of functionality within that. An ability to have um, you know, like a mini test executive, which we call sequencing, which can include um, I.O. to external instruments, as well as I.O. to controlling the prober itself. Um, I touched on the location manager, which allows easy access and navigation with a semi-automatic probe station. And I finished with an example um, showing the mass scratch pad and its capabilities. And so this really ends the, uh, the micro app. I know we always have to keep these, you know, within a 15 minute time slot. I've got a little timer over here. I see I've got a couple of minutes left, but unfortunately, I don't have an easy way Take your live questions. Um, again, this is Craig Kirkpatrick. My name is on the title slide. And I am Craig.Kirkpatrick at formfactor.com. So if you need to follow up with me after viewing this, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. And thanks for attending.